Millions of people in this city are seeing their homes get submerged in water every day. The city is sinking at an alarming rate and parts of it could vanish beneath the waves in the next few years. So with the lives of over 10 million residents and the city's status at stake, Indonesia has an $80 billion plan to save Jakarta. But will they be able to get it done before it's too late? And is it really the best way to save Jakarta? Let's find out! By 2030, Jakarta is projected to surpass Tokyo as the largest megacity in the world, but this growth comes with a grave risk. Parts of the city are sinking by as much as 15 centimeters a year. If no action is taken, experts warn that a third of Jakarta could be underwater by 2050. Now the question is, how did Jakarta get here and what can be done to save it? Jakarta's water crisis lies at the heart of groundwater extraction. The city doesn't have enough piked drinking water for its population, so most residents rely on wells to extract groundwater from shallow aquifers. This constant draining leaves empty pockets underground, causing the land above to collapse. Think of it as removing the foundation of a house. Eventually, the structure will cave in. To make matters worse, Jakarta's growth has been explosive. Skyscrapers, shopping malls, and even government buildings continue to rise, despite the city's sinking crisis. These towering structures add immense weight to the already unstable ground, further compacting the soil. On top of all this, Jakarta faces the global threat of climate change. Rising sea levels are putting coastal cities around the world at risk, and for a city that's already sinking, the danger is even more pronounced. But one thing is clear, Jakarta isn't ready to sink without a fight. The Indonesian government has come up with a solution. The Garuda Dyke, a massive seawall project that could save the city or bankrupt the nation. What will the Garuda Dyke look like and would it be enough? Named after the mythical Garuda bird, the symbol of Indonesia, the Garuda Dyke is no ordinary wall. The original price tag for the Garuda Dyke was $40 billion, but costs have spiraled over the years. Now, experts estimate the total could exceed $80 billion. This raises a tough question. Is it worth spending so much on a single project when Jakarta faces multiple crises like traffic congestion, pollution, and poor infrastructure? Despite the controversy, supporters of the Garuda Dyke argue that it's not just an option, it's a necessity. The dike will include an adaptable coastal and river defense system, as well as a reservoir for water management. It will rise 24 meters high to withstand the worst floods and tidal surges. The dike will stretch 120 kilometers along Jakarta's coast, making it one of the largest of its kind. When the idea of the Garuda Dyke was first proposed in 2010, it sparked fierce debate. Environmentalists, political groups, and community advocates voiced concerns over the project's potential downsides. For instance, the construction of the dike could disrupt marine ecosystems and hurt the livelihoods of Jakarta Bay's fishing communities. According to Parad Ridwan Yudin, Indonesia's coastal campaign manager at the Environmental Forum, an alternative approach could be to rejuvenate coastal areas by replanting mangroves and restoring riverbanks. These natural solutions would be less expensive and more sustainable, improving water management without harming local ecosystems. But with all these criticisms, the government sees the Garuda Dyke as the ultimate solution. On the other hand, some are still of the opinion that the Garuda Dyke is undeniably impressive, but it's also incredibly controversial. The price tag is astronomical. Couldn't that money be better spent fixing the root problems, like groundwater management or improving drainage systems? There's no guarantee it will work. What if the seawall can't hold back the rising tides in the long term? And there's another twist. While Jakarta is busy trying to save itself, Indonesia is already planning to relocate its capital to East Kalimantan on the island of Borneo. Does that make the Garuda Dyke an over-the-top farewell gift, or is it a sign the city isn't giving up on its future? For some people in Indonesia, the Garuda Dyke isn't just about holding back water. It's about resilience, innovation, and a gamble on humanity's ability to fix what we've broken. But is building a massive seawall the only way to save the city, or are there other options? The short answer is, yes, there are alternative strategies. Although land subsidence cannot be reversed, the rate of sinking can be slowed through sustainable policies and innovative water management solutions and they've worked in other cities around the world. Decades ago, Tokyo faced a sinking crisis similar to Jakarta's. Over-extraction of groundwater was causing the land to subside rapidly. 
Instead of building massive infrastructure, Tokyo banned groundwater extraction with strict regulations forcing industries and households to stop relying on groundwater. The city also expanded its piped water network, ensuring everyone had access to clean, reliable water. The results were astounding. Tokyo managed to halt its sinking and reclaim stability. So why can't Jakarta do the same? The world is watching to see which option they'd choose because the cost of doing nothing is enormous. Jakarta's sinking crisis already causes $135 million in economic losses every year, a number that could balloon to $642 million annually within the next decade if no action is taken. The first phase of the Garuda Dike is set to be completed by 2027, with construction aiming to protect the city from worsening floods. For the millions who call Jakarta home, the stakes couldn't be higher. Will the Garuda Dike secure the city's future, or will it be remembered as a costly gamble? Let us know what you think in the comments section.